Hi. In the next couple of videos, we're going to present a few different tracking algorithms for n objects. But first, in this video, we will explain what problem these algorithms are trying to solve and the different methods that they build upon. Let's illustrate the problem that we wish to solve with an example. So here we have two objects with one dimensional states, and we have a timeline that goes from time one to time 10. So here the states for the two objects are shown as orange squares, and they're connected over time by orange lines that show how the object state evolves over time. We have noisy object detections, and they're shown here as blue circles. And there are also mist detections, which we can see for the object on the left at time five and time nine. And for the object on the right, we have a mist detection at time six. And uh, there are also clutter detections or false detections, which are illustrated here by red triangles. So the purpose of n-object tracking is to process these detections and estimate a posterior density for the object states. However, we don't know the true object states, and uh, we do not know which detections are from objects and which are clutter. So what we have to deal with is more like what is shown here, detections illustrated as red circles. So assuming that we know that there are two objects, we have to process these measurements and estimate the object states. We want to process the measurements and estimate the posterior density, which is a mixture density that has weights or probabilities for different data association sequences and state densities conditioned on the data association sequences. So due to the rapidly increasing number of mixture components, the exact posterior is intractable and we have to do approximations. So different tracking algorithms correspond to different approximations of the posterior density. And the methods for dealing with a large number of hypotheses can be divided into two main categories called pruning and merging. Pruning means that we truncate hypotheses with small weights. In other words, we remove hypotheses that have a low probability. This can be understood as approximating the weights of the truncated hypotheses as zero and then renormalizing the remaining non-zero weights. Merging means that we merge several hypotheses into a single hypothesis. The mixture density for the multiple hypotheses is then approximated by a single density. A good tool for merging is to merge such that the kullback leibler divergence is minimized. And we don't have to choose to do either pruning or merging. Instead, we can combine them in several different ways. For example, we can prune all hypotheses except for a fixed number of hypotheses. We can prune only the hypotheses that have small weights. We can merge hypotheses that are similar in some sense, where similarity can be measured, for example, by the kullback leibler divergence. And we can also merge all hypotheses, regardless of how similar they are. Quite often, Tracking algorithms that include merging starts by pruning hypotheses that have small weights and only applies the merging to the remaining hypotheses. We're going to present three different tracking algorithms. One in which we are greedy, which means that in each time step we take the best association and prune all others. Another in which we merge all hypotheses into a single hypothesis. And the third in which we maintain multiple hypotheses with high weights and prune the rest. The greedy algorithms are based on computing optimal assignments and the posterior density is approximated by a density with a single hypothesis. The tracking algorithm that we will have a look at is called global nearest neighbor or GNN filter. And this is a generalization of nearest neighbor filter to n objects. Merging all hypotheses into a single hypothesis can be based on computing what is called marginal association probabilities. And we will learn what that is later. But in this case, the posterior density is again approximated by a density that has a single hypothesis. And the tracking algorithm that we will learn about is called Joint Probabilistic Data Association, or JPDA filter. And this is a generalization of PDA to n objects. And the last type of algorithm is based on computing the m-best assignments in each time step. So now the posterior is approximated by a density with multiple hypotheses, and the resulting tracking algorithm is called multi-hypothesis tracker, or MHT. And actually, GNN can be seen as a special case of MHT, where M is set to be equal to one. In common to all three algorithms is that we wish to approximate the posterior density. So here we have illustrated the theoretically exact marginal posterior densities for two objects. On the left, we have the first object in blue, and on the right, the second object 
in orange. If we make a greedy approximation, which is what GNN does, then for this example, we get the approximate marginal posteriors shown here. The GNN posterior matches the main peaks of the exact marginal posteriors. However, there's a fair amount of difference between the exact and the approximation, especially for the second object. On the right in orange color, there's a fair amount of probability density that the GNN approximation does not capture. If instead we merge all hypotheses, as in JPDA, we get the approximation shown here. We see that for both objects, the approximation is arguably better than what it was for GNN. However, there's still some difference. Lastly, we can maintain multiple hypotheses, which is what MHT does. And then we can get the approximation shown here, which out of the three we have just looked at is clearly most similar to the exact marginal posterior. There's some difference, but the shape of the posterior is captured quite well. Okay, so what we'll learn about in the next few videos is GNN, JPDA and MHT.